Hi, and welcome back to Hybrid Animation using Motion Capture in Maya and Motion Builder 2016. My name is Mark Butler, and I'm an animator and technical director. Here in Module 2, we're going to be talking about character preparation for animation in the next module. Armed with our pre-production plan from Module 1, we will evaluate our character and organize our assets to handle all that will be required of them. We'll plot out our approach and create the initial poses required for our character's performance. We'll deal with the props and then we'll finally test our character in the environment scene as a reference file and save the master formats for use in animation production. Basically, we'll finish the pre-production and then move on in the next module to producing the animation. The whole point of doing pre-production is to understand what the character is doing and why they're doing it. Once you understand what the character is doing, think about why it is they're doing it. Not just the technical requirements from a shot, but what the character's motivation is his thought process, or his objective. The action that you do in the animation should be designed with all this in mind, and that's what pre-production is about. So you need to think about this while you're in pre-production on the character, and that will influence everything you do when you're actually animating. In this module, we're going to be covering shots 14 through 30 from our shot list. And that covers about this section of the script. And if you'll remember from module one, basically one sentence equals one shot on the shot list. So we have all of our storyboards in place for these shots. And we have created an animatic uh, for all these shots in module one and placed in all the dialogue and rough uh, audio as well, the scratch track. So at this point, we're really ready to get to the blocking or setting up the character in pose per shot. So the first step uh, to blocking is to go over our character. And here we have Ronnie Ball, all set up and ready to go, fully rigged and uh, ready to be posed. Uh, the character itself is the high resolution character. I've provided you a low resolution version for you to use along with the module. So um, we'll take a look at the character. Uh, as you can see, his uh, basic T pose uh, still has his neutral look on his face, which is permanently pissed off. But he's got a light side too, you know? I mean, he's just serious, right? And I think that this is a real important part of pre-production is really understanding the character that you're gonna animate and trying to emote through him. Uh, so understanding his background, which we went over in module one, is, um, is really crucial. But you're trying to take on that character's identity. So, like I said, the rigging is complete at this point. Uh, the character is pretty much complete. We will do some adjustments to the weight uh, of, the, of the polygons. Uh, it's at this point that we start putting them through the extreme poses, and that's really when you realize where the problems with the deformations of the character are. But they're really easy to fix. So we'll be doing that as we go along. Maya and Motion Builder are like sister programs, and I use them both in conjunction with each other. Basically, I do all my prep and setup work in Maya, and then I do my animation in Motion Builder, and then send it back and forth between the two. When you block out a character is really when you're gonna see the problems that occur with the deformations in the rig. So, uh, but it's really easy to jump back and forth between the two. So you pose them and then you come back and you, you fix them. And the nice thing about fixing the deformations as you go is that you're not trying to make all of them at one point 
you're just trying to address them as they occur. And then it ripple effects through everything that comes after. For instance, you see his leg is bulging out here a little bit when it gets bent and it's a little messed up on the right leg too. So it's pretty easy to delete the influences you don't want in this area. For instance, the gun control or the left leg. Just select them like a spreadsheet and zero them out. Occasionally you'll find little errant single vertexes that haven't been influenced properly. Uh, there's a really great tool for fixing them and it's called weight hammer. So all you do is just select the individual vertexes and then pull down weight hammer and that moves them right back. Now you don't want to use weight hammer on everything. It's really just for fine tuning and fixing little errant um, vertexes as you come across them. So as you can see, rigging is an ongoing process. It doesn't, you know, have a start and end. It's, uh, you know, very iterative. Uh, but now I'll just go ahead here and on the left leg, once again, select the vertexes, go to the component editor and then delete the right leg influence from the left leg here. So as you can see, fixing these problems as you go along is very easy. And uh, once again, we have some little odd vertexes here. I'm just gonna select those and hit weight hammer again. So with human IK, it's real easy to snap them back to the T-pose. Just select everything and click the T-Pose button. And then I like to turn on Show IK Handles so I can actually see the rig on the character here in the viewport in addition to the character Human IK Character Control Panel. This just provides me multiple ways to access the character controls however I like. So next, I want to send the character over to Motion Builder. The important part to note is that it's connected to Maya, so anything that you do here in Motion Builder will be able to be sent back to Maya. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You'll be doing that a lot. Everybody has a different preference when it comes to the screen layout in Motion Builder. Uh, this is the way I like to do mine. First thing, I'll pull out the Human IK Character Controls window and my Pose Control window. my key control window, and I make sure to turn auto key on. And then my animation layers window. I like to put that over here on the left. So uh, this is basically the layout that I like to follow. Everybody's gonna be a little bit different, but this allows me to see the character pretty complete. Now here at the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and um, make sure to set a keyframe on zero with the T-pose. And then every other key is going to be one pose from the shot list. So I'm starting with shot 14, but in this case, it'll be on frame one, okay? 